What's up, boys and girls? It is I, Kid Migraine, the sick GM, the grumpy GM, the jackass GM. And welcome to another OG GM adventure. Now, I normally don't like to self-congratulate. I mean, I occasionally mention my influence and things I've done for gaming in the past, present, and future. But generally, I know I haven't really talked about it a lot because I don't really dwell on the past that much and I don't really didn't think anybody cared. I mean, it wasn't that important. I did stuff. Some of it was kind of meaningful. Some of it wasn't. Some of the stuff I did went someplace. Other things didn't, but, you know, in the great scheme of things, who cares if I wrote such and such 25 years ago? It's not D&D 5th edition. I don't fucking care. But recently I was challenged to pat myself on the back and self-flagellate and self-congratulate and list off the things that I have had some work with. Um... Unfortunately, most of them aren't in print anymore because it was a long time ago. And I haven't really done anything major recently, mostly because anytime I come up with an idea, it's already been done. So I'm like, well, I don't... Uh, somebody already did it. So, and better. And whatever. I don't have the wherewithal to invest a year working on a project because I gotta make money. <laughs> And this isn't paying as much as I love it. Maybe if you guys supported me more. Self-plug. All right. So what have I worked on? Um, going back, I don't remember exact dates, um, but we're talking late 80s. Uh, there was a game I worked on and play-tested called Vigilante, where you basically played cops and other stuff, or street vigilantes or detectives. It was... Um, that game would go on to grow up to become a game called Spirit of 76, which I think just got released its second publication, but I don't think my name is anywhere in there. When I playtested it, helped them write it, it was a long time ago, and it was done over a convention and then some exchanges of actual letters, and it was called Vigilante. But I think there was another game called Vigilante or something, and from what I understand, it grew up to become Spirit of 76, the role-playing game of 70s exploitation television shows and movies and stuff like that. There was a superhero game that I helped work on called um, Villains Always, Villains Never Win, or, or Villains Always Lose, Heroes Never Win, or something like that. It was a playing card-based superhero game. It was a very small publication. I brought it up in conversations on superhero role-playing sites, and people are like, I think I remember it, but I don't know if it ever went anywhere. I'm not even sure if I remember the name right, but I think it was Villains Never Win and Heroes Always Lose, or something like that. Or here, Villains Never Lose, and so I don't remember. Um, but it was a playing card-based role-playing, superhero role-playing game uh, that I helped work on. Um, when I went to college, I did a lot of work for the game mechanic and space gamer and fantasy gamer and I did a lot of stuff with David Lawson and Barry Osser and Richard LeDuc and um, that led to me hooking up with uh, Steve Jackson Games and playtesting GURPS Supers and GURPS IST uh, and I did a lot of stuff in GURPS IST and constantly, constantly tried to make GURPS Supers a superhero role-playing game as opposed to just a point-based rip-off of Champions. Um, and there was a lot of stuff that I was like completely disagreed with. Like From the very beginning, I was like, your water-based Aquaman rip-off doesn't have swim as a skill. He should at least have one point in swim because he's fucking Aquaman. And they were like, no, his default is enough that he doesn't need to swim. And I was like, no. Swimming is more than just kicking and paddling. You have to, you know, take swim lessons. And if you're fucking Aquaman, you should know how to at least have one point in swim. Um, so GURPS IST. 
And then I continued to work with them. I did a lot of stuff on GURPS time travel. I was involved with the GURPS cyberpunk fiasco and that whole mess. I did some stuff for a game called GURPS Special Ops. I did GURPS Martial Arts. I did a lot of stuff for GURPS Martial Arts. Me and my friend John Aruda basically wrote GURPS Martial Arts. Then there was another one um, that I started working on. And it was after GURPS Time Travel, and I was having a lot of trouble with the Steve Jackson writing and the Steve Jackson mentality and just the, the, the ego that was going through the Steve Jackson then. And basically, I just sort of stopped working with them. In fact, I think I got blackballed, if I remember correctly. Woohoo! Yeah! Um, then I was I met Mike uh, Poundsmith of Art to Games at a convention playing um, Cyberpunk. And I was like, uh, can I, you know, is there some way we can work together? And we hit it off, and I did some stuff for Cyberpunk 2020, and I did some stuff on a lot of the different Cyberpunk 2020 products, like the Chromebook. Um, and then Cyber Generation came out, and I did a lot of stuff with the first generation of Cyber Generation. And I kept bugging them um, almost every time Mike and I talked. It was, you know, interlock, I think, would be great for other things besides just cyberpunk. It's such a great potential system. So I wrote a bunch of different really bad knockoff things for Interlock that I would send to Mike and talk about Mike. And, you know, I always wanted to do an Interlock superhero role-playing game. And Mike and company had just almost got the rights to the Dragon Ball Z to do a Dragon Ball Z role-playing game. And they were like, okay, your ideas are going to be very much part of the Dragon Ball Z role-playing game because we really like where you're going, but it's not really cyberpunk or cyber, cyber generation was closer to the ideas I had because cyber generation did have sort of superpowers. So that started going into the, the works, but it never really went anywhere. And then Mike started doing fusion, which was interlock meets champions. And that was like, okay. And I did a lot of the fusion lock-ons, um, Fusion Supers, Fusion Psionics, uh, Fusion Medieval, a lot of that, but a lot of that was online. Um, somewhere around there around then, I wrote what I called the, Cy the Complete Cyberpunk Dictionary, where I just spent like six months going through every cyberpunk book, every cyberpunk movie, every cyberpunk thing that was out at that point in time and tried to come up with all the words and all the lexicon and that was published first in the Fantasy Gamer through the Game Mechanic, through David Lawson. And then Mike did something with it in Cyberpunk. And I sold it to him. And it, you know, I thought I would do something else with it. But then I kind of lost interest in Cyberpunk because I really wanted to work on other stuff. Um, and, you know, Cyberpunk was sort of a, a, a flash it you know it had to burn itself out and i had to do other things um so i did a lot of stuff with fusion fusion eventually became the silhouette role playing system which i did like one thing with them and then they went off and became um you know all the stuff that they did with uh, heavy gear and stuff like that um there's a lot of small press things i did at this point in time which were like you know short-lived games uh self-published games a lot of superhero games with Jeremy Stanton, uh, Jay Winterford, Jay Willis. Um, I wrote some stuff for uh, second edition D&D. Again, fantasy gamer, space gamer, the game mechanic. Um, when I moved to LA, um, I was playing mostly D&D. I did a lot of work with Kerry Solomon and the beginnings of what would become The Forge and his game company, Numenor Games. I did some stuff with Tom Lindgren and uh, Benjai Games out in uh, Riverside. Um, but mostly it was just D&D. Um, so I was playtesting stuff for, with Wizards of the Coast and um, other D&D companies. Uh, I kind of did some stuff with Ardor and Grimoire, third edition, right before Dave died. Um, but mostly for my ALA years, I was focused mostly on just playing D&D, writing D&D. And then I, I graduated into writing screenplays and poetry and became a published screenwriter and a published poet. And 
I published my own, my first own game, which of course, as we all know, was Project 97, which became The Project, which sold 15 copies and was a total laugh fest of self gratification. And actually, it wasn't even really a role playing system, it was just junk. I look at it now and I was like, what the fuck, what I was thinking. But I have been told my skill system and my list of skills is some of the best anybody has ever seen and i know it has been cribbed by other games since then because occasionally i still get an email from like um um mike thompson or the guy over um at uh, change of hobbit or we, whatever or weeby games and they're all like um yeah can we still use this and i'm like sure what the fuck it's public domain use it i don't care um and then I published my second role-playing game, which was called Henshin, which was my attempt at an anime role-playing game. Uh, and that kind of coincided with Tinker's Dam, which was another anime role-playing game that came out the exact same time. And, of course, there was like Big Eyes, Small Mouth was also coming out at the, about the exact same time. So I looked at Tinker's Dam and Big Eye Small Mouth, and I was like, okay, you've already done what I've done better, so I don't see any reason to compete with you guys. I did some stuff with the Tinker's Dam people. I never got in touch with the, the, um, the Big Eye Small Mouth people. Uh, but mostly during the LA years, I was doing the stuff that would eventually become The Forge. Uh, and I was doing a lot of stuff with Kerry Solomon, Jay Willis, and of course TJ Storm, and a lot of second edition, third edition, playtesting 3.5. Um, and then I moved up here to Ventura, where I did some stuff with Bad Monkey Games during my first couple years, but that was more physical stuff. That was like figures and, mo and, and, and uh, scenery and designing scenarios for the scenery and Bad Monkey Games was about to put something out, which would have been huge, but then just they exploded, and it never went anywhere. Uh, we did some work with the early, early versions of using, like, big screen TVs to put your maps on, which, you know, grew up to a whole thing. But at the very beginning of that, there was some people up here doing that, but I guess other people were doing the exact same thing uh, and, you know, trying to put gaming on the early... YouTube, AOL, and what Facebook and, and stuff like that. Um, but uh, recently, no, I haven't really felt the need to publish anything or write anything. D&D uh, &D Next was the last thing I worked on. It was a game called Armageddon 2066 um, that we play tested and helped write. Uh, there's a game that Seth Bradley has been working on for years that I had to sign an NDC for, and I'm one of the playtesters of that, but that's, I don't know if that will ever see the light of day, but that's been going on for years. Every time I sit down and think, I have got a great idea for a game, or here's something I played a long time ago that I think needs to be brought up to the future now, and I start working on it, and I start doing the research, I find out it's already been done. Case in point, Tales from the Loop. I was working on something exactly like Tales from the Loop because, you know, I really love the TV show Primeval and I really love the ideas of riffs, but I thought riffs was just too in your face. Um, oh, yeah, I also did some stuff with Heroes Unlimited. Um, so I was working on something which is a lot like Tales from the Loop, but Tales from the Loop came out and I was like, well, fuck, this is better than anything I could ever think of. So, okay, Tales from the Loop. And then I was working on something recently, but then I saw that Oxney Games had bought the rights to Trinity slash Aberrant slash Adventure. And I'm like, that's kind of the same thing I was working on. And then, that, you know, there's already Feng Shui, which is kind of the same thing. And then, you know, the Age System just put out their modern book, which is pretty much just a word for word, a rip off of Feng Shui and a rip off of Tr Trinity and kind of the same idea I was working on. So why try and compete with a company who has more money and more wherewithal than I do at this point in my life? Because I really have no interest in, you know, anymore. I'd rather just take what's been written and use it because I don't know. Uh, I think the best stuff I did was the cyberpunk stuff and, you know, arguing consistently with 
Steve Jackson games over GURPS IST to get GURPS IST to be what it was. I, I think I remember doing some stuff with the company that um, made Savage Worlds when they were switching over from the old system to the new system and they were up here playtesting. Um, I remember playing with, what's his name, uh, Baron, the guy with the mutton chops who's big, you know, uh, what's his name, Ivan Van Norman, Ivan Baron Van Norman, he ran a game <coughs> here that I play tested that eventually became his role-playing game, his zombie role-playing game, but I don't know if my name's in that or not. Um, I don't, for, you know, I would love it if people sent me stuff to review or play test or would show, show, show but I don't really, you know, I don't really talk about it because it's not really that important to me anymore. Um, I did it. I published. I worked. It's over. I moved on. I did screenplays. I did poetry. I did, you know, theater. I did art. Now I do drawing. Um, will I ever publish or play test again if somebody approaches me? Actually, I just met somebody tonight who was talking with me about working on a comic book project. So we'll see if that goes anywhere. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff I did in the late 80s, early 90s, a lot of one-shot, self-published stuff that I don't know if they ever went anywhere. You know, like people would show up at cons and say, we're playtesting this game. And I would, you know, sit in and then I would communicate with them back and forth using this ancient form of communication called letters. But, you know, I don't know how many of those grew up to become real games. You know, uh, I know Carrie Solomon's system never went anywhere. The playing card role playing game I worked on never went anywhere. I worked on some, play tested some CCGs. <clears throat> I played Legend of the Five Rings several times, which the guy who designed Legend of the Five Rings and actually beat him like four or five times uh, while he was playtesting the early version of what would become Legend of the Five Rings. But again, how much of that has my name on it? I only claim to fame that I can say 100%, if you can find a copy of it, my name is on it, is, you know, Cyber Generation First Edition, GURPS IST, GURPS Time Travel, GURPS Martial Arts, GURPS Cyberpunk, yes, I know, on the first edition of all those, my name is on those. After that, who knows? Who cares? So, to answer your question, that is my short claim to fame. Uh, I've written a lot of letters, I've written articles, I've communicated with people. You know, I'm on Gamma for some reason, I don't know why. Um... But mostly, it's always been, I come up with an idea, and then I find out it's already been done, so then I'm like, I'm too lazy. I've got more important things. Gaming has never paid my bills. I wish it had. That's kind of part of the reason why I started doing this YouTube thing, is maybe it would supplement my income in some way as I'm getting older and sicker, and it's harder for me to work. But it hasn't yet, and I don't foresee it will, because I'm not as hot topic cool as people like... Um, Matt Mercer or Adam Koble or those guys. I'm, I'm a big, fat, old, balding Jewish nerd of questionable sexuality who tends to like self, you know, insult himself and never really knows what he's talking about and refers to you, his fan club, as losers. So, what the fuck ever. There you go. Let's uh, continue that by answering the next question in the next video. Why don't I talk about superhero role playing games more? And what have I done about it? And then I can tell you my stories about Jeff D. Oh, yeah. Till then, talk to you later, losers. And remember, don't let anybody tell you you are less than awesome because just if you're out there doing anything that gives you joy and doesn't hurt other people, you're awesome for losers. I'll talk to you soon.